Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Bless you, family. It's just so wonderful for you to be in this worship experience this Sunday morning with us. 
Uh, what a time, what a time. God is off the chain. You know, like I always say, God always blow my mind. He's always blow my mind. And so I just want to say thank you this Sunday morning for you all getting up with me. Let's get to the word of God. Let's get to the word of God. Vote. I need to preach. Voting is the way. <laughs> That's what I need to preach. Voting is the way <laughs> out of this mess. Okay. Because this institutional racism is not going to work. Okay, it's like a virus in our nation, and so we need to get out there. Let's get to the word. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this word that's coming forth. We thank you uh, that we're able to highlight the issues and the problems that the, uh, the devil is bringing up on our society. You have given us a pill. We need to take that pill of voting. And so God, give us the initiative to stand. When we can't stand, stand. We need some people with backbones to stand. And so we thank you. And then God, we ask you to illuminate this word in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirit that we may be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we may be able to mature to the believer that you desire for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to Job, y'all. Let's go to Job. Not Job. Job. Okay, I read the Bible and I say, hey, let's turn to Job. The guy got there and said job, J-O-B, it does spell job, but we talking about Job. Okay, Job, the first chapter. Let's look at Job, the first chapter. Awesome book, awesome uh, rendition of, of disaster. Okay, and so let's look at Job, the first chapter. Let's look at the sixth verse. Come on with me, come on with me to uh, the sixth verse. Let's go there. Okay, so it's Rambo, God bless you. Let's go there. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Yes. Now, the Lord said unto Satan, Where comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. A verse. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that uh, fears God and eschews evil. Satan then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doeth Job fear God for naught? Doeth Job fear God for naught? God bless you. God bless everyone that read the word of God. Keep your Bibles with you because we're going to go back to the Bible. And I'm, I'm not really going to try to be long because I know you've been up all Saturday night doing you. Okay, doing you. You've been up there doing you <laughs> all Saturday night. And so now you up with uh, me up here so you can get the, the word of God so it can undo you. <laughs> undo you all right and so let's do this i thank everyone that's not a part of gi for just just inviting and, and sharing all of you that's not a part of gi i want to thank you for being a part of this ministry for supporting this ministry spiritually with your prayers financially i just want to say thank you okay we're going to use for undergird a subject or a title in a difficult place in a difficult place in a difficult place y'all stay with me we're going somewhere <clears throat> in a difficult place the, the the book of job wrestles with the uh, the old age question why do righteous people suffer the old age question why do righteous people suffer mm. If God is a God of love and a God of mercy, why do righteous people suffer? Some of you seem to be living the best you can. You, you're trying to live the most godly life and Christine life and, and blessed life as you can. You, you're trying to uh, cross all your T's, dot all your I's, Put all your periods and put all your commas in the right place of life. But even in the midst of that, seem like I feel God, seem like suffering knows your address. What is it about good people that they have to suffer bad things? This is what the book is answering. Man, in this text, 
clearly teaches the sovereignty of God. Oh, I like that. I like that. The, the sovereignty of God and the need of man need to acknowledge such. What is it that God wants mankind to, to know, to, to vacillate, to understand about him? What God, oh, good God, what God want mankind to know and to grasp in his finite mind is that he cannot be figured out. No matter how much Bible you read, no matter how much Bible you study, no matter how much word you meditate upon, come on somebody, doesn't matter how much prayer you pray over the word of God to give you intellect. It doesn't matter how you uh, go before God and petition God and, and request God to give you intellect and to give you knowledge and to give you insight. God will give you all of that if you ask. But one thing that God will not do is give you the, the vision to figure him out. What you talking about, Bishop? Well, I'm glad you asked me. I, if you figure God out, listen to, listen to me. If you figure God out, he's, he, he's not God anymore. He, he's become as man because who knows the mind of God? Who, who's able to sit down, so say the word of God, and, and counsel God? Nobody. So, so if you didn't figure your God out, he's no God. See, I, 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 I figured Buddha out. I didn't figure Buddha out. Y'all not with me up in here. I didn't figure him out. I didn't sit down and study Buddha. I didn't figure him out because that, 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 that dude got two ears and can't hear. He got two eyes and can't see. He got a nose and can't smell. He's sitting on a rump that he can't move. And he got a mouth that he can't speak. I, I done figured him out. He got hands and he can't touch you and pray for you. See, I didn't figure him out. And so since I have figured him out in my finite mind, he cannot be my God. But the God of heaven. Mm. Who is the God of heaven? Oh, good God Almighty. Jehovah Jireh. That is what I'm talking Jehovah Nisan. You know, that's the God that we're talking about, the God of heaven. We can't figure him out. And so here in the text, the Bible said, the, the Bible said, my brothers and sisters, as, as we look at the word of God, see, this is the word of God. I want you to know that I got the word of God. The Bible says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And the Bible said that Satan came uh, with them. He was there. He was there. Let me give you some theological information uh, so that you can dot down and write down in your the computer of your mind so you can keep this. <laughs> okay, You need this information. Remember this. Uh, Satan at this time and at the present time is able to go in and out of the presence of God. He has that uh, uh, legality. He, he can do that. He, he has that permission to go in and out of the presence of God. And the reason why he's going in and out of the presence of God is to accuse me. It's to accuse you. It's to accuse the brother. All right. And so here he come marching in the meeting. You know how some folk go to the meeting. They want to come to the leadership meeting, but uh, uh, they not there. They just want to come to the leadership meeting to start mess. They just want to come to the leadership meeting to stir up junk. They just want to come to the leadership meeting just to be there to see what, what the topic is about. But they're not going to do anything about it. They're not going to help the meeting at all. Only thing they're going to do is bring devastation. They're going to bring suffering. They're going to bring uh, malicious acts. Come on, somebody. They're going to bring my brothers and sisters. They're going to bring to the meeting hardship and, and hard times and, and arguments and confusion. You understand when I'm in conflict. That's all they bring into the meeting. What are you saying, Bishop? That's the only thing that Satan, when it came to the meeting, is bringing. Satan just wanted to bring conflict, uh, uh, conflict and hard. And, and, and all of this, these distractions to me. And so they was there. And so Job, 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 Job was minding his own business. Minding his own business. Are you with me here? I'm getting ready to preach this thing. And, and here comes Satan. And God said, oh, okay, since you are present, Satan, where you going? Where you going? It's not like God didn't know where he was going. God just asked him the question. Come on, he's God. God just asked him a question. God can ask you a question to see if you're going to tell the truth. 
<laughs> because he's God. He, he already knows. God already knows. Satan, where are you going? And look what Satan is saying. I'm going to and fro in the earth. Walking up and down in the earth to see what's going on. Oh, that's what you're doing? But, but so since you are present in my earth, in my creation that I created, hello somebody, and the creation that I gave you permission to walk up and down in, y'all better say something to Bishop. Amen. God gave Satan permission to walk up and down in his creation. God gave Satan permission to come in and out of his presence. God gave him that. And since I have given you that permission, Satan, I need to ask you a question. Uh, have you considered my servant, Job? <laughs> have you considered him? Let me move. Let me move on because I'm getting a little happy here on this Sunday morning. I'm getting a little happy on this Sunday morning. And before I'm through, you're going to be happy too, okay? Uh, the Bible says Joe was in a difficult place. A difficult place. Let me explain it to you on a biblical level. My brothers and sisters, you are in a difficult place when hatred is coming your way and you don't know what's coming you're in a difficult place when misery is coming your way and you don't know what's coming you're in a difficult place when tribulation is coming your way and you don't know what's coming you're in a difficult place when sickness is coming your way and you don't know what's coming you're in a difficult place when distress is coming your way and you don't know what's coming you're in a difficult place come on when suffering is coming your way and you don't know what's coming you are in a difficult difficult place when persecution is coming your way and you don't know what's coming. You're in a difficult place when lies are coming your way and you don't know what's coming. You're in a difficult place when people are trying to set you up for a fall and you don't know what's coming. You're in a difficult place when people are setting traps for you and you don't know what's coming. You're in a difficult place when people are setting pitfalls for you and you don't even know what's coming. That's a difficult place. You are in a difficult place. Somebody hit the bishop and say, Bishop, I've been in a difficult place before. Come on, come on, I'm wait on you. Hit the bishop and say, I've been in a difficult place before. You're in a difficult place, my brothers and sisters, when the rain is coming and you don't know the rain is coming. You're in a difficult place when the lightning begins to flash and you don't know that the lightning is getting ready to flash. You are in a difficult place when the thunder is getting ready to roar and you don't know that the thunder is getting ready to roar. You are in a difficult place when your haters uh, is trying to bring you down and you don't even know they're trying to bring you down. Is anybody out there have some haters that ever tried to bring them down? Uh, somebody hit the bishop and say beware of your haters come on beware of your haters what you mean beware of the haters your haters all around you you got haters on your right hand you better listen to me you got haters on your left hand you better listen to you, you got the haters behind you running up behind you you better listen to you you got haters all in your face Talk to me, songwriter. Smiling faces. Sometimes pretend to be your friend. Yes, you, my brothers and sisters, good God Almighty, is in a difficult place when you got those, my brothers and sisters, that's trying to kill you, and you don't know they's trying to kill you. You're in a difficult place. When your adversary, good God Almighty, feeds you a a plate of food and you don't even know it's poison. Good God Almighty, you you in a difficult place. You're in a difficult place, my brothers and sisters. Here the Bible says, I'm getting ready to fly. Now the Bible says that Job was in a difficult place. Let me tell you, because he knew without God in his life, Satan caused his life to be in a difficult place. Satan can cause his life to be in a dry and empty place. And so Job was not even aware of what was going on. Remember the story of Job? It says that Job got up every morning 
and he made sacrifice for him, uh, not only for him, but for his children, not knowing if his children going to misstep because he wanted his children to really understand and worship and recognize God. He wanted his children to recognize worshiping God. Amen. Is right to do. He wanted his children to recognize that lifting God up is right to do. He wanted his children to know that elevating God is a great thing to do. He wanted his children to know that praising God is in order. He wanted his children to know that blessing God to the highest is in order. He wanted his children to know that walking into the presence of God is in order. He wanted his children to know that leaning on God is in order. He wanted his children. Who is he? Job. Job wanted his children to know that depending on God is in order. He wanted his children to know that acknowledging God is in order. He wanted his children to know. Good God Almighty, that praying is in order. That's what he wanted his children to know. And so it seemed like his children was not that mature at this time. And so the Bible says that Job got up early in the morning, every morning, and sent up sacrifice for him and his children. Do I have a witness here? Let me tell you something. If we don't be careful, if we don't be careful, Satan will cause our life to be empty. You're not with me. Come on, you're not with me. Val, watch me. Good God, Sister Sandy, I'm talking to you. Brother Mike, I'm talking to you. Deacon Wallace, I'm talking to you. Uh-huh. Minister Brown, I'm talking to you. Brother and Sister Bass, I'm talking to you. If you don't watch yourself, if you don't be careful, Satan will cause your life uh, to be abandoned. Satan will cause your life to be depleted. If you don't watch yourself, Satan will cause your life to be hollow. Gwen and Inez, uh, I'm talking to you, Sister Brooks and Sister uh, uh, Rose. I, I'm talking to you, Sister Ross. If you don't watch yourself, Satan will cause your life to be deflated. Good God Almighty, Donnie, I'm talking to you. Uh, Brother Newton, I'm talking to you. If you don't watch yourself, uh, Satan will cause your life to be depleted. If you don't watch yourself, Satan will cause your life to be barren. If you don't watch yourself, Debbie, you don't watch yourself, Ebony, if you don't watch yourself, Dr. Hall, if you don't watch yourself, y'all not talking back to me, 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 if you don't watch yourself, yes, Deacon Bell, if you don't watch yourself, Satan will cause your life to be barren. Hello, somebody. I don't know about you, but I need God every day. I need God every day. You don't watch yourself, Bridget. You don't watch yourself. God will cause, amen. I mean, Satan will cause your life to be dry if you don't watch yourself. I need God all the time. Do I have a witness? In this text, I want to point out two things and then I'm going to get out your hair. In this text, my brothers and sisters, um, two things I want to point out. The first thing I want to point out is Satan was very hostile toward Job. There it is. Satan was very hostile toward Job. <laughs> Let's look at verse 9. Let's look at verse 9. It is telling us something. Verse 9 through 11. Let's look at that. Come on with me. Come on with me. Come on with me. Look what it says. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do a Job fear God for naught? Had thou had um, had not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Has thou blessed the work of his hand, his substance is increased in the land put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse thee to thy face boy Satan was hostile toward Job your enemy is hostile toward you and you ain't even done nothing to him your haters are hostile toward you and have not, have, you have not done anything to them amen now, people, people just hate because you are great. People just hate because you have great influence. That's what people just hate because you are favored by God. That's the problem. Is people are just hate because you are blessed by God. That's what it is. People are hate because God's hand is on your life. That's what it is. People hate you because you are anointed by God. That's what it is. People hate you because you are carrying out your assignment that God gave you. That's what it is. Haters, haters, haters. People hate you because you love God. That's what it is. People.
people hate you because you bow down and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is. That's why people hate you. People hate you because you're trying to live for God. That's why people hate you. People hate you because you make missteps. And God know you make missteps. Good God Almighty. And God is still your friend. That's why people hate you. Let me preach on here, my brothers and sisters. Satan was very hostile <coughs> toward God. Excuse me. Satan was very hostile toward God. Let me point out some facts. Let me point out some facts. Yes, let me point out some facts. Uh, let me point out some facts on a divine level. All right. No, no, some. Hey, God has God has our safety at heart. God has our safety at heart. He has our safety at heart. God loves you. Let me say that again. That that made somebody feel real good this morning. God loves you. He just loves you so much. He just loves you. God loves you. Mm -hmm. God just loves you. Amen. God just loves you to death. God, God loves you so much. You, I mean, I'm talking to somebody. I'm ministering to somebody. God just loves you just where you are. You don't have to change anything. God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Amen. I just need to get that point across. God really loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you, that whosoever believe in him, you should have everlasting life. They should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you. God has our safety at heart. Let's go to the text. Look what it says in the text in the ninth verse. Let's look, let's just look what it says in the text, okay? I, I, I love this. 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 A verse. I love this. Has not thou made a hedge about him? Look at Satan. Has not thou made an hedge about him? Have, have, what, what, what you saying, Satan? Have, have God covered you with protection? Have God covered Job with protection? God will put a barrier around us to keep us safe. That's how much he loves us. He will put a barrier around us to keep us safe. That's the kind, that's the, that's the kind of God that we serve. God will put a guard around us to keep us safe. He have, a, he have, he have his, his angels around us to keep us safe. He put a barrier. He put a guard to keep us safe. Satan mad. Satan mad. Your haters are mad. The adversary is mad. The devil is mad. Has not thou made an hedge about him? God will put, my brothers and sisters, a screen around you. So the hater flies. Can't come in and get you. So the hater bees can't come in and get you. Put a screen around you. So the hater mosquitoes can't come in and get you. And if they do get you, God is Smack them dead. Smite them, God. Look what it says. Good God Almighty. Had not thou made an hedge about him. Here was him, first person mentioned, Job. That's the kind of God that we serve. God would put a, he would put a fence around you. Why? Because he loved you. Why he love me? He loved you unconditionally. You don't have to do nothing for God for him to love you. We love, we serve, we worship, we magnify, we glorify, we lift up, we bless a God that loves us unconditionally. None of, none of us deserve everlasting life. None of us deserve the blessings of God. None of us deserve the promises of God. None of us deserve the health of God. None of us deserve the finance of God. None of us deserve the, 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 the substance of God. None of us. But because God loves you, because he loved you, he put a hedge around you. Because God loved Job, he put a hedge around Job. I'm preaching this morning. That's, that's the way, that's the way the God that we serve get down. He put a barrier, he put a guard, he put a screen, he put a fence around those he loved. That's the first thing. That God has our safety at heart. 
when people that say they love us, people that they say they walking with us, people that say they have our back, hello somebody, would not do the same. Y'all not with me here? Will not do the same. But God, unconditionally, loves us. That's power. That's power. You need to grab on to that power. God loves you unconditionally. Look at the last thing you done done. Look at the last foul thing, nasty thing, hateful thing, sinful thing you have done. But even in spite of that, God still loves you. Still concerned about our safety. He loves us. Concerned about our safety. I'm glad about it. Hello, somebody. Do I have a witness here? Somebody put up there and say, God loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. Come on, I'm going to wait on you. God loves me. This I know. <laughs> because the Bible tells me so. God loves me. God loves you. Let me move on. Then my brothers and sisters, not only A, gosh, has our safety at his heart, but B, God shows us favor in whatsoever we touch. God shows us favor in whatsoever we touch. He shows us favor. Mm. Go to the text again. Look at there. Look what it says. 10th verse. That's where we are in 10th verse. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand. <laughs> God has blessed the work of his hand. What you saying? He ain't had to do nothing crooked. He, don't, he didn't have to do nothing decisive. He didn't have to do nothing undermined. Hmm. He didn't have to do nothing that is illegal. None of that. For God to touch everything for his good. He had to do none of that. Only thing he had to do is love God. Only thing he had to do is worship God. Only thing he had to do is recognize God. Only thing he had to do is send a sacrifice to God for him and his children. He didn't have to do nothing under him. He didn't have to do none of that. None of that. And how do you know, Bishop, that Job did not have to do none of that? How do I know? Because Satan called it out. That's how I know. Satan called it out. Now can Satan call your stuff out? That you got your house? Without doing? That you got your car? Without doing? That you got your jewelry? Without doing? That you got the furniture in your house? Without doing? That you got your money in the bank without doing, hello somebody, can Satan call your stuff out and say only God bless you? No! Satan called it out. Thou has blessed the work of his hand. What you talking about, bitch? I, 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 can, I can call right here because God has favor in your dreams. <laughs> he has favor. He, he has favor in your dreams. That's the way God operates. That's the way God operates. He got, he got favor in your dreams. And so here, here, my brothers and sisters, God shows us favor in whatsoever we touch. That's what the word of God says. He said, thou hast blessed the work of his hand. And what you're saying, what you're saying, everybody that I mentioned, Evangelist Miller, God, God has favor in your goals. That's the way God operates. He has favor in your goals. Yes, Sister Ross. Yes, Sister Hurst. Yes, Poochak. Yes, 
sister. Uh, I need. Yes, yes. He has favor in your goals. God has favor in your plans. Uh, God has plans uh, in you and the favor of his will. That's the way God operates. God has favor uh, in your uh, opportunities. That's the way God operates. He has favor in your opportunity. God shows us favor and whatsoever we touch, he shows us favor and whatsoever we touch, thou has blessed the work of his hand, his hand, his hand, his hand. God has blessed the work of his hands. His hands. God has blessed the work of his hands. And so God has favor, my brothers and sisters, in his, in your ambitions. Whatever you're ambition about, God has favor. He's going to work it out for your good. And God has favor. God God has favor in your purpose. That's the kind of God that we serve. He, had, he has favor in your purpose. Yes, that's the kind of God. That's the kind of God that we worship. That's the kind of God that we magnify. That's the kind of God that we glorify. That's the kind of God that we lean on. That's the kind of God that we rely on. That's the kind of God that we depend on. That he shows us favor. Do I have a witness here? That's the kind of God. Huh? Yeah, Joe, my brothers and sisters. Oh, good God Almighty was in a difficult place. Why was Job in a difficult place, Bishop? The reason why Job was in a difficult place is because Job didn't see what was getting ready to come his way. You're in a difficult place. When somebody shoot a fastball your way and you don't even see it coming and it beam you dead in the head. Good God Almighty, he's in a difficult place. Talk to me, talk to me, Job, talk to me, Job. Job, my brothers and sisters, and every morning he took a sacrifice to present before God for himself and for his children. That's what he did. He took a sacrifice and he kneeled down and he sacrificed that before God. Hello, somebody. That's what he did. Not only, not only has God... Our, is God has favor, uh, has our safety at hand. Not only does God has our safety at hand, not only does God show us favor and whatsoever we touch. But thirdly, <coughs> thirdly in the text, thirdly in the text, God has caused us to prosper mm, beyond measure. God has caused us to prosper beyond measure. Let's look in the text. His substance is increased in the land. Look at the complaint of the adversary. Look at the complaint of Job's hater. Look at the complaint of Satan. His substance is increased in the land. Jealousy will kill your haters. Jealousy will kill your friends. Jealousy will kill your family members. Jealousy will kill your co-workers. When God allow you to increase in the land. God allowed Job to increase in the land. Look what it said. Look what it said. It said his substance increased in the land. God will cause your peace to increase in the midst of a storm. That's your increase. Somebody hit me and say, increase, increase is mine. Increase is mine. Somebody hit the bishop. Come on, chat with me. I need all of you to chat with me and say, increase is mine. God will cause, my brothers and sisters, your peace to increase in the land. God will cause your mighty anointing to increase in the land. That's the kind of God we serve. A God that will anoint you above all your peers. I'm anointed. I don't know about you. I'm anointed. It doesn't matter which way I fall. It doesn't matter if I fall on my face. I'm anointed. It don't matter if I jump on my feet. I'm anointed. I'm just anointed by God. I love Jesus. I'm anointed by Jesus. You just anointed. And that's why God, good God Almighty, will cause your anointing to increase in the land. God, my brother and sister, will cause your finance to increase 
in the land. How many, how many out there this Sunday morning? Don't play, don't play with the bishop. Don't play. <laughs> don't play with the bishop. How many out there this Sunday morning who need an increase? Come on. Somebody give me some hand. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, come on, give the Lord some praise. How many out there that need an increase? A financial increase. And you better, you better testify. You better say, Bishop, I need a financial increase. Everybody that hit me right now, everybody hit me right now. Ah, come on, hit me right now and say I need a financial increase. You're going to get a financial increase this week coming. Come on, I can't see you hitting me. Hit the bishop right now by faith. It's by faith. I don't, I don't have it. I can't give it to you. It's just by faith. The man of God said, if you hit me and say I need a financial increase right now. Uh, this week coming, you're going to find a financial increase. And, and when you get a financial increase, bless God with something. Bless God. Bless God real good. Bless the man of God real good when your financial increase come this week. What is this week? It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, your increase is coming. Uh, do you hear me? Here, my brothers and sisters, um, uh, God will cause you. Uh, you not hearing me. Uh, oh, good God Almighty. Uh, God, God, God will cause your, your influence, uh, the increase. Uh, that's the kind of God that we heard, have, we serve. God will cause your influence um, to increase. That's, that's the kind of God that we serve. Yeah. Your, your influence. You have influence. On the right hand, you have influence on the left hand. You have influence all around you. That's the kind of God that we serve. Why is that? Because God has caused us to prosper beyond measures. He has caused us to prosper beyond measures. Good God Almighty. If possible, can you put all three of those pointers up there for me so they can see them again? If possible, A, God has our safety at heart. And B, God shows us favor and whatsoever we touch and then see God has caused us to prosper beyond measure look at A B C A B C A B C and what a word bishop what a word what a word what a word yes God will cause um, uh, your blessings to increase in the land I'm getting ready to get out of here because that's the God that we serve. Uh, God love you so that he's going to cause your blessings to increase in the land. God, God is going to cause your favor to increase in the land. How do you know? How you know that's true, Bishop? Because Satan called it out. He called it out. Satan called it out. Your haters called it out. The adversary called it out. Do I have a witness here? Satan said his substance increased in the land. Satan called it out. Yes. So since Satan called it out, and God put a stamp of approval on it. Uh, God will cause your family to increase in the land. Every one of your families. Uh, just start hitting me and say, God, cause my family to increase. Uh, come on, cause my family to increase. Come on, Fanny. Come on, Gwen. Come on, then. Come on, Dr. Hall. Cause my family to increase. Come on, Missy. Come on, Bridget. Uh, cause my family to increase. Come on, Brother Newton. Come on, Brother President. Cause my family, God, to increase. Uh, come on, Deacon while you're standing with me, cause my family to increase. Come on, Jeannie, cause my family to increase. Uh, come on, Sister Sandy. Come on, Minister Brown. Come on, Minister Baz. Sister Baz, cause my family to increase. Come on, Ebony. Come on, Devion. Cause my family to increase. Uh, come on, Evangelist Miller. Cause my family to increase. God is going to cause my family to increase. Uh, come on, Alicia. God is going to cause my family to increase um, and as we close I got to get out of here I had another point but I, I get that on the next uh, section as we close God is going to cause my expectations um, to increase um, yes I am excited about what God is getting ready to do in my life um, what you talking about Bishop the adversary can't bring hardship upon us um, unless he get God's permission Ain't God all right. The adversary, my brothers and sisters, I'm glad about it. 
and I'm getting ready to leave you in good hands of the Lord. God is going to cause my brothers and sisters, amen, Satan, to back off you. Why is that? Because the adversary cannot bring my brothers and sisters um, adversity upon you uh, unless he give him permission. Uh, ain't God good? Uh, your adversaries, your haters, uh, uh, your Satan cannot bring uh, disaster in your life um, unless God give him permission uh, and them permission. Ain't God all right? Uh, good God Almighty, the adversary cannot bring uh, this comfort in your life um, unless he get permission from God. Ain't God good? The adversary cannot bring misery in your life unless he or they or them get permission from God. Ain't God all right? Is it anybody here can say that I love God? Without a, God, without a doubt, I love God because he first loved me. Ain't God good? Let me get out of here because the Lord has been good to me. Ain't God good? Is it anybody there can say the Lord has been great to me? Ain't God good? Is it anybody there can say the Lord has been marvelous to me? Ain't God good? Is it anybody there can say God? The Lord has been fantastic to me. Won't God do you? I'm in a difficult place, but that's all right. If you're in a difficult place, don't you worry about it. If you're in a difficult place, don't give up. Don't give out. If you're in a difficult place, don't give in. If you're in a difficult place, don't throw in the towel. Why? Because God is on your side. Ain't God all right? You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed when you leave out. You are blessed when you come in. You are blessed in the city. And you are blessed in the field. If you feel blessed, what I need you to do is give me a high five and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the morning. Yes, I'm blessed. I'm blessed at noontime. Yes, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the evening. Yes, I'm blessed. I'm blessed at night. Yes, I'm blessed because God has his hands on me. Is there anyone here today can say God on this Sunday morning has his hand on me. I love him because he has his hand on me. I worship him because he has his hand on me. I praise him because he has his hand on me. I exalt him because he has his hand on me. I lift him up because he hand his hand on me. Won't he do it? Won't God do it? Won't God take care of you? Say yes! God is a good God. He's a wonderful savior. The only thing you have to do is accept him as your personal savior. He's standing close. As a matter of fact, he's not standing close. He's sitting high and looking low. And he's ready to feel your contrite heart. He's ready to Feel your repentant spirit. He loves you. He cares about you. No matter what wrong you have done, people might not forgive you. People not, might not walk with you anymore. Might not want to be your friend. Might not want to be your associate. But one thing you can rely on, if you fall, God going to reach down and pick you up because that's the kind of God that we serve. And the only thing you have to do is embrace him as your personal savior. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life and save me. I know I'm not qualified. I know I haven't kept your commandments so well. I know I haven't walked upright. But come into my life and save me. And the Bible says, whosoever call on the Lord shall be saved. And so that's all you have to do is call on the Lord and you shall be saved. Come on, let's go to prayer for this social 
issues in our society. Let's pray. Grab a loved one. Grab a loved one. Let's pray. Okay. Let's pray. I want to pray with you, all of you, that not even a God-inspired member, okay, a GI member, I want to pray for you. Amen. Invite your friends and your loved ones to join me on my on my uh, <clears throat> YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, invite, so I can pray with them. So I can pray God's blessing in their life. I just want to pray God's blessing in your life. Why? Because God loves you just the way you are. Just the way you are. All of us are sinful. I'm sinful. Everybody's sinful. We just have to be real with God. You don't have to be real with me. I don't have nothing to prove. I'm say it to you again. I don't have nothing to prove. I don't have a thing to prove. Okay? Whatever you're going to prove, prove it to God. Because he died on Calvary. He was buried. And he rose the third day. That's all you have to do is confess his name. Come into my life and save me. Grab everybody. We're getting ready to pray. I gave you time. Grab the kids. Come on. Grab Big Mama. All right? Come on. Get around. Grab everybody that you're in the room with. And I'm not just talking. I'm telling you to grab somebody. If you're in there by yourself, put your hands together like this. If you're in there by yourself, just put your hands together by yourself like this. Okay? If you're by yourself, put your hands together like this and let's pray. But if you're with somebody, grab their hands, the kids' hands, and say, come on. Get off your, get off that, that, that PlayStation and get off that, your iPad and off your phone, looking at your phone and come on because Bishop is getting ready to pray for us, okay? Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you keep on covering us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Continue to cover us. Continue to touch my heart. God, allow me to walk before you with a contrite spirit and a pure heart the best I can. God, help us to lift our eyes unto the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from you, God. And so, God, when we get in trouble, you can hide us in your provision. God, you are our strength. You are refuge. The only person we can, be, can depend on for real and real talk on earth is you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because who can we trust? Can't trust nobody. Can't depend on nobody. Can't rely on nobody. But you, God, we can rely on. We can depend on. You have favored our life. And we want to say thank you. You care about the safety of our life. And we want to say thank you. You have increased our substance. And we want to say thank you. Now, God, we ask you to put a hedge of protection around us. Keep us in perfect peace. Who mind stays on thee. And God, I ask you to reach in that family. Reach in that home and keep that home together. No matter what comes or what goes, don't let that home crumble. Don't let that home break up. Keep that home together. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus as you move, keep the, keep the family together. Keep the family together. Keep them together, God. Put your heads of protection around them like you had around Job. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you walk in that house and keep that marriage together. Keep it together, together like you kept your old family together. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you, you keep people's babies together. And send them to school and some of them doing virtual work on the computer don't know in the next five or ten years if that computer looking at that computer that much is going to hurt their people it's going to hurt their eyesight well, in the next 20 years they say because of what we did when we was young and during COVID-19 and had to look at this computer for so long it burnt out our eyesight but God we ask you to keep us we don't know what befalls us Ah, God, so give us a, a, a mind and let our children look at the computer and then take them off. Let them run around and then go back to the computer. Don't allow us to let, let them look at that computer for two, three, four, five hours straight. It's not good for the eyesight. So, God, give us that kind of insight. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Now, God, we ask you that you bring peace into that single person's heart, that single mother, that single father that's trying to make it on their own. And it's difficult difficult to work and 
and, and try to raise children and work and try to raise grandchildren is difficult in these COVID-19 times. So God, we ask you ah, to give them peace. And those who are married trying to make it, we ask you, God, to give them peace. Help them out, Lord, the most, the much, much as you can help them out. Then, God, those that are on unemployment, those that have no food, no no clothes, no shelter over their head, God, be, clo be clo clothes for them, be shelter for them, be food for them. Don't let your people suffer. And, God, we thank you. We love you. We know Satan is walking up and down about in the earth to see who he may devour. Keep us all in perfect peace who mind stays on thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless your family. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, God bless your family. Come on, come on, everybody. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on, give God a hand of praise. God bless you. God bless you. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you for tuning in on this Sunday morning. Amen. This Sunday morning. Um, it's a little bit after 11. We thank God uh, for you. Amen. We thank God for you. And so what we want to do, we want to present uh, a chance to give. Okay. It's going to come up. There it is up on your, up on uh, the screen, how we should give. We want to continue uh, to give. We can't be God's giving no matter how we try. And we want to thank all of you for your tithes and your offering. We yes. thank you greatly. Amen. We thank you greatly. We want you to, to continue to bless us. Why you, why you have it on your mind right now? Cash app us right now. I put it back up. Cash app us right now. Cash app the church right now. Cash app your bishop. Come on, come on, ask your, 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 your tithes and your offering. You can't keep holding off, okay? You just can't keep holding off. You can't keep holding up God's money. You can't, you can't do that because God is not happy with that, okay? God is not happy with that. Send God what belongs to God. What you talking about, bishop? Amen. Jesus was concerned about the things that belong to God. And uh, you know I like to tell stories. <laughs> he asked for a coin. He asked for a coin. He said, somebody have a coin. And uh, they gave Jesus a coin. And when Jesus got the coin in his hand, he asked a, a question, a realistic question for a realistic time. He said, whose superscription is this? Amen. And somebody said, Caesar. He said, okay, good. All right, render to Caesar what Caesar's, and render God what belong to God. And so I'm telling you, brother, this morning, I'm telling you, sisters, this morning, I'm telling your wife and husband and family and uh, this morning, you who are single this morning, render to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and render to God that which is God. Amen. And get off God's money and give it to him. Get, get off of his money and get right now. The bishop is telling you uh, you're going to have an institutional issue if you keep messing around with God's money. Get off God's money and give it to him right now. Go ahead. Cash out it. However you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. Just give it to it. Just zero it. However you do, just give him his money. Okay? Give him his money. We're a man robbed God. And so we thank you for being faithful in your giving. All of you that's been faithful, I can call some names of the people that's been faithful in their giving. I ain't going to call no names. But I might call them next week. Call some... <laughs> I'm gonna call some names <laughs> next week. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna go and look at and see who I'll give. I'm gonna call some names. All right. <laughs> oh, amen. On social media, <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Franklin. <laughs> God bless you, Bab. But I'm gonna, I want you all to be a blessing. All right. I want you to be a blessing. All right. God bless you. We didn't had a wonderful Sunday morning. And uh, I love y'all, okay? Keep up keep the good, up the good work. Keep up the good work. And uh, God will continue uh, to bless you, all right? Okay. God bless you to all my singers, all them people to be singing. They come here and sing. God bless you. And don't forget to put your mask on. Put your mask on. Put your mask on. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to put my mask on. No, I'm not getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to go eat. All right, let's go eat. God bless you. And we talk to you later.